Hey guys, and welcome back to another Factorio workshop. I am actually not joined by Zuri this time. He uh, was unable to join due to some te uh, technical difficulties, so hopefully he will be with us next episode, but I did want to get a workshop done anyway, and look through the designs, and uh, found, you know, a lot of it I wanted to save to do with Zuri, so I decided to do a design that I made up, um, that I worked on uh, during a stream a few nights ago. So what we have here is essentially train smelting. As you can see, there is uh, it pretty much unloads directly from the train and goes straight to smelting. Now, uh, it's important to kind of mention the purpose of this that I had in mind uh, when designing this is I wanted to eliminate as, as many steps essentially as possible in this for performance reasons, right? So obviously just like even like all of this wouldn't really you wouldn't really notice performance alone, but just eliminating things where you can does help. So I'm going to use the earth map, for example. On the earth map, we have a setup where the things unload into active providers, right? So the active providers are constantly sitting out in order to have the stuff picked up. So the robots usually pick up the stuff from the active providers and put it in storage. So that's one robot trip, essentially, right? They have to go to the active provider and then bring it to storage. Then they have to bring the ore from the storage chest to the smelters. So that's a second trip. And then they have to bring the finished product, the actual plate, from the smelters to wherever it goes to be used for something else. And that's so that's three bot trips. Um, sometimes they may bring it straight from the active to the requesters, depending what's going on. But even so, that's still two. I wanted to eliminate as many of those trips as possible. And I decided to try to come up with something where you can unload directly from a train. And that's what we, what we have here. And we've essentially brought that down to just one step where the robots bring the finished product, the plates here, to wherever they need to go. Okay, so what happens is these unload from the train cars, and these are just items from the creative mod, um, just so it spawns infinite stuff. But this is set up for a 262 train. Um, you could easily reduce it to a 242 or a 141, whatever you want to do. You can make it bigger as well. Um, and these unload uh, it, four inserters per side to unload it's obviously not the ideal six but in terms of how furnaces would fit that would be nearly impossible to have it look nice at all um, and it still unloads really quick again these are infinite but if they weren't i timed it unloads really quick so anyway you have four per side unloading and they unload into passive providers now they don't have to be passive providers the reason i made them passive providers is um, so that the ore is counted in the network so you could do like a smart stacker setup a train stacker setup like we did in the earth map where it detects how much you have in your system and then holds trains there or not that's the reason i did this um so they they insert into here and then insert as pull and go into underground belts now underground belts are nowhere near as performance intensive as normal belts right or at least not for the distance they cover right because they can cover well, I mean, essentially six tiles, because the start, and then four in between, and uh, then one at the end. This isn't um, actually doing four, but still. They're less performance intensive, so using them here isn't really that bad. So, they go into undergrounds, and one underground just goes under the beacon and inserts into him. And then he goes into, uh, these would normally be past providers, I'm just using this void thing to eat the materials. And then the other one continues under and goes to a second row of smelters. Now the second row is optional. Um, you of course don't have to do this, but I figure, you know, why not? We, we can fit it. It's just more you can fit per station. And then he does the same thing. And this is all beaconed and moduled. So we have productivities in the furnaces and we have speed beacons here. And the layout is staggered a bit, so everything gets the same bonus. It it actually was surprisingly difficult to get the beacons to work so that all the furnaces had the same bonus. Um, so they all have a crafting speed of 7.4 and obviously 20% productivity. So definitely not bad. Uh, this this is station alone, this is the only one working. This station here produces about 7.3 thousand a minute, uh, give or take 100 or so. but. This is the only station working, and we're producing over 7,000 a minute. So one station can do 7,000 a minute. There are other designs uh, that that people show me that can do more, like have more beacons and stuff, but they utilize a weird mechanic, like having like a steam engine in the middle. So you had like, like engines, right? And then you had cargo wagon, engine, 
cargo wagon, engine, cargo wagon, engine, so you spaced it out enough to fit more beacons. I don't, I don't really like doing that. So this is the best I could come up with at the moment uh, for, for doing this. There is another type of design I want to play with that could possibly utilize having one extra beacon per furnace. But I did just want to show this off for anyone interested. Um, I will blueprint it, I think, and leave it in the description. Uh, I, I was going to use it kind of for my own stuff, but, you know, if you're interested, I'll leave a blueprint string. And there you go, guys. So, you know, and then the other nice thing with, with this is you can, I've kind of shown here. Now, these don't line up, which is kind of annoying. Um, they would if I did the, like, the tracks first initially and then put the smelters down. Um, but you can kind of create grids like this, right? So we have grids here, and uh, this is utilizing two-headed trains. You, you could do a single-headed train and just not necessarily use this type of grid layout. But yeah, I mean, you can just create grids, and this is just endless, right? You could then do another stamp here, and then another one down here. And the train pulls in, does its thing, pulls out, goes through your stack or whatever, however you want it to go. There you go, guys. There it is. So the like train smelter I guess is what I'll call it um you know I think performance wise it's incredibly efficient yes it uses belts but they're undergrounds and uh that's just way way better than like normal belt unloading and it only really has one robot trip involved bringing the finished product which is quite nice and uh I mean seven seven thousand a little more a minute for one station is certainly not bad in my book but anyway, that's it. I would love to hear any thoughts you have on this or any uh, improvements. Like if you have a design um, that still utilizes a normal train um, rather than like a kind of janky like locomotive cargo wagon train um, that that has a higher like beacon count and smelting speed than this, I would definitely be interested in seeing it. So post that stuff down in the comments. Any other thoughts you had, have, love to hear them. And that'll do it. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you all. Do take care.